And you're ready to go, Justin. Great, thank you. Um, as we, as my, my members uh, have known, that I got to read this um, introduction um, every single time because of Zoom. Um, but uh, nonetheless, thank you. Um, for joining the uh, TMAC meeting. The time is now 7 p.m. on March 10th. Uh, as, as a preliminary matter, um, I'm Justin McCullen. I'm the chair of TMAC. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, um, Tony Delgazzi. Here. Ryan Hoyland. I can see him. I don't know if they're going to fix his audio. Um, wave that you see that you understand. Okay, good enough. Um, <laughs> Lieutenant John McGrath is not here. Uh, Justin McCallum, I am here. Seth Bauer, vice chair. Rebecca Tarantino, excused. Donna Mullen. Here. Suzanne Stein, excused. Uh, and also for, uh, let me see, do I have a David Lazarus? Excellent. Yeah, um, good have, evening, everybody. Hey, David. Uh, Heather Simmons. She is not here, so she's second on the agenda. So, um, but, and then Matthew Heidman. I'm here. Great. All right. Um, and then we also, um, we also have Bob Wilson, who uh, uh, in, who's here, who's here. also our technical okay. advisor. Uh, all right, so good afternoon. This open meeting of the Traffic Management Advisory Council is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March, uh, March 12th, 2020, during the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so as long as reasonable public access is afforded, so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. This meeting is a webinar and will, be, will allow public comment. For this meeting, the TMAC is convened by Zoom app as posted in the town's website, um, identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and some of the attendees are participating by video conference. All of the attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and they can um, and take care not to screen share your computer, um, uh, being aware that anything you do broadcast may be captured by the recording. Meeting materials, all supporting materials that have been provided to the members of the body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. So we're going to be in a minute, we're going to be turning to the first item of the agenda. But before we do, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective clear and con uh, clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. Um, we're going to have about uh, five or about 10 to 15 minutes um, to, to have your remarks. Uh, just be aware that all of the uh, TMAC members are aware of the petitions that have come in online. Um, so we, we've actually read them all, but we will give you about 10 to 15 minutes to um, kind of bring forth any additional material uh, or whatever it may be to, for your petition. Um, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. And because this is a public meeting, we do have public comment. Uh, I don't know if we, Daphne, have, had, have anybody viewing the, the um, on the public comment now, but if they are, um, I will also, before any... Um, uh, motions. I will open the item up for public comments by raising of the electron or the chair will open the, the um, item for public comments. You can use the uh, hand icon. Uh, for those participating by computer, the raised option can be found by clicking participants button at the bottom of the screen. Um, it will it will bring up options to choose. Select raised hand. For those participating by mobile device, click on the more button at the bottom right and select raised hand. The chair will call on each raised hand and you'll be afforded up to three minutes for any comment. Uh, finally, each vote taken in this meeting has to be conducted by a roll call vote. So with that formality being aside, um, we will move to the uh, um, second Mr. Chair, just wanted you yes. mentioned uh, in terms of uh, attendees, you have nine attendees at this moment. 
All right. Okay, perfect. All right. Oh, great. And so I will, um, I don't have their window, but if you, if they raise the hand, will you be able to let Absolutely. me know that they have perfect? I want to give them the opportunity. I'll Thank you. Um, so moving on the second item of the agenda, which is the minutes from January 13th. Has uh, everybody gone through the, uh, are there any comments, concerns uh, about the minutes for the last meeting? Any additions or any motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Motion to accept by uh, Seth. Any second? I second. Thank you, Donna. Second, the motion's on the floor. Uh, Daphne, if you could uh, do the roll call for the acceptance of the minutes. All right. Anthony Gilgazer? Aye. Mr. Hoylan? It's an eye. It's an eye. <laughs> Rain? That, that was a yes. He, his his uh, mic he is waved, off. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. McCullen? Yes. Mr. Bauer? Yes. Ms. Mullen? Yes. The minutes have been adopted. Um, excellent. So um, I will now turn it over to uh, Bob. Um, if you um, want to bring us through the status report um, since um, we last spoke, which was in January. Okay. I'm Bob Wilson. I'm a technical advisor to the committee. And I have a couple of quick newsworthy items. Um, at the Oak Street and Chestnut Street intersection, the traffic signal changes removing the uh, lag left turn signal have been adjusted and put in place. Um, I have noticed that, so that was good. And moving on, um, the highway division has been notified to install the uh, left turn must yield at the Dedham and Salt intersection. Mm -hmm. That's on order from what I gather. Um, the caution children's sign on Ravad Road going up the hill from Great Plain Avenue, that has been installed. That was installed about a little after the last meeting. Um, the other items which I'm trying to find quickly here. Um, the signage on Central Avenue, I have not gone out there to check if it's actually installed, but the highway division and Ryan might know more about the um, curve warning ahead sign with the side street on Central Avenue near Rollsgate Road. I'm not sure if that one has been installed as yet, but I know the DPW highway knows about it. Um, there's, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't hear that. Donna, did you, did you have something to say? No. Oh, okay, I thought I saw it. Um, I'm sorry. Square. Okay, I'm trying to move on fast here from the words. Um, there is some, I do believe I mentioned it or it was mentioned previously, but Jarvis Circle, there was a preliminary count done out there. Mm -hmm. Um, they want an, an additional count, which is going to be happening in the next couple of weeks because they wanted to wait till springtime yep. to run the next count. But for informational purposes, the speeds on Jarvis Circle were uh, 17 miles per hour eastbound and 23 miles per hour westbound at near Nardone Road. So it's a little down the road mm -hmm. from where they want their count, but. Gotcha. So you're gonna you're gonna repeat that count. Yeah, I'm gonna put that out perfect in a more proper location perfect. a little bit later in the season. So that, that'll probably be next week, I would imagine. Okay. Um, beyond that, I had some housekeeping items regarding a couple of items that we did earlier on mm -hmm. on Stevens Road. Um, this is back from 2019. I was curious, we have the counts and I do believe I presented them previously, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure if the committee formally made a decision on what to do with the results of the data. If you could remind us. And, and I could run that, it's on the status update, but I yep. it's from October of 2019. 
what the uh, what the request was for that. Why that request that? was for I think it's like a caution children sign with a speed tab on that section of Stevens Road. I do remember that. And we were trying to determine what the speed limit on the speed tab is, I believe. Hmm. The speeds I mean. as they are out yeah. there are between 23 and 24 miles per hour, or were, I should say, okay. at the time of the count. I'm just trying to pull up. So what I'll do is, unless anyone, does any other of the members have a comment on that item? Um, I can do a deeper dive uh, and we can come back next meeting and see if we want to close that out or have some sort of that, motion that's, on that. Yeah, that's I, kind of what I was going at. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I can't pull that up now and I, I, okay. want, I want to look at the minutes and figure out what we what we said, okay. et cetera. We did, the, okay. we did the survey and just so we can yeah. close the loop on that. So um, we'll, we'll put that on the item for, um, for next month. See if okay. We close it up. Okay. And, yeah. There was another one on I'm trying to find it right now. Um, similar situation. I don't think we made a formal uh, call call on the West Street going down the hill. Yeah. After uh, Dale Street going down towards uh, uh, the Hillside School, the Old Hillside School. Yeah. It was, was signage and it was signage and vehicle speeds. Right. And, and they were the speeds there were much higher, 43 to 39 miles yeah. an hour, which makes sense if you figure it. Yep. So I, we I don't know if we formally made a decision on that one. I no, I okay. Um any other members of the committee have a comment on that? That traffic study was um June. The 85th percentile was 43 westbound, so it was yes. exceeding the de facto yeah. speed limit, and eastbound yeah. was 39, which also yeah. exceeded the de facto speed limit. Yeah. Um, and the petitioner, I believe, if I'm trying to remember, I don't know if they wanted some sort of control or whether it was something within. I'm not sure if it was enforcement or control. I was, I think. Yeah. Okay. A mix. I think there was. Let's say I think there was even put up the the mobile um, the mobile truck, the police truck. Mobile to, truck, the, right? I, I think it was. Um, so again, I'm gonna I'll do some research. Did any other members of the committee uh, either remember or want to make a comment on this item? This was West Street um, between Central Ave and Hillside signage and vehicle speed issue. So we did a study. We did find the vehicle speed was exceeding the de facto, and actually it's posted. Is it posted or is it? Is it? I'm not sure if it's, posted uh, up if it's uh, thickly settled. I'm not sure. Do you know, uh, Tony? Or it's a prima facie, thirty miles per hour. So, so it's a thick. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. So we might want to bring this up next month as well, especially when um, the police officer is is yeah. here with us. So why don't we, uh, Bob? Why don't we mark Thanks, these sir. two items? We'll 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 bring okay. them on to the agenda for old business for um for next um, month, and we'll kind of talk about that and see if we can you know either come to a resolution or, or close the loop. Okay, and beyond that, um, again continuing with yep. traffic counts in various locations, including Jarvis, Nardone, um, Best Road, and a couple of others. Yep. Uh, that's the, just an ongoing. These were the ones in blue, the right? Spring. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's and I all did, I have. To just know. to the committee, I did ask Bob to kind of go through some of our older items and to kind of, you know, look at and see whether we can, we need to close the loop on some issues because I saw a lot of open issues in the past, either that were assumed to be um, dealt with by when we did a pedestrian safety survey or they were going to be dealt with otherwise, but I really wanted to make sure that we close the loop. So I did ask Bob to kind of uh, bring up some of these old issues. And I, I appreciate that. I think he marked them as blue. So um, I will take the action uh, this month to kind of do some, do a deeper dive into our minutes. And then we can kind of follow up when uh, Lieutenant McGrath is here um, on some of those to, to see if whether we want to, um, you know, ask for an increased enforcement or whether we wanted to, um, you know, go forward with any other actions. Does that sound Good with uh, rest of, any objections, comments, concerns. Raise your hand if you want to just say something. Seeing nothing. Thank you, Bob. Did you have anything else? Um, oh, that pretty much sums it up. Perfect. Any um, any other comments on um, 
the previous um, action items from any, any of the members of the committee? <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Sir, Mr. Hoyland. From what I can see, we're, uh, Revod Road, um, the sign's been installed for children playing. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if I yes. was on mute prior to, yes. or if Bob reported. And the Oak Street uh, signal timing was adjusted late this, mm -hmm. uh, in January. Yeah. And I did see that and verify that myself because I live right, 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 right near there. So, um, <laughs> it was wonderful. I wanted Rebecca here because that was her issue of actually coming to the committee was, was, was that issue. So, um, excellent. Thank you. Um, well, can we consider that unless well, there's any other comment? No. Okay. All right. So we will move on to item number four. Um, Mr. Lazarus, uh, intersection crosswalk speed signage in the corner of Charles River and Central Ave. Um, I will yield the floor to you uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Like I said, we've um, um, kind of, we, we, we've read the actions, but you know, I will give you the floor to, um, to provide some commentary and, and, and more petitions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. And thanks to everybody. Uh, I'll try to be brief. This is my first presentation about a crosswalk, so I recognize there's a lot of expertise here. So forgive, uh, forgive the rudimentary level of my presentation, please. Uh, if if it's all right, uh, I'm going to try to share my screen. Yep. Um, just to give you some visuals. Uh, so uh, we're requesting a crosswalk, at the corner of Charles River and Central Ave. And uh, just for context, I live around the corner on Oxbow Road, which is uh, a U-shaped street uh, right nearby. And the primary reason that we're here tonight, uh, there's a number of my neighbors who I've been in, in touch with. There's about, I don't know, 12 to 15 kids, at least elementary school age, who live on Oxbow. And uh, our ability to go from Oxbow to Newman or to town uh, or to Temple Alia is uh, hindered by the scary uh, crosswalk uh, la uh, intersection at Charles River and Central. And so traffic on Central uh, can be scary at times. Here's the intersection. Um, you can see, obviously, you're all very familiar with Central Avenue. Uh, in the mornings and in the evenings, especially pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID again, traffic is very heavy on Central Avenue, or at least at what we would call very heavy. Uh, trying to go for a run from my neighborhood, for example, up to the Country Way neighborhood, uh, it's it's uh, scary crossing over Charles River Street for an adult. Um, and so anecdotally, there are people who go to the Ridge Hill Reservation and I see them running on the side of Charles River and then trying to make that crossing. And if if uh, that crossing were to be made a little bit safer, it would open up access to a whole lot of people. Uh, so here's the intersection and the whole area um, on the bottom of that, you can see Walker Gordon Field, you can see um, Red Wing Bay, Charles River Peninsula, the rail trail, all of that uh, is without sidewalk and is essentially cut off below this intersection. Here's uh, the overhead of the intersection. Um, so I would leave it to the experts where we would recommend markings go, uh, but uh, on the right side of the photograph that's crossing over um, Charles River Street, that side there, if there were a crossing there, for example, in the trees on the, the top of the screen, there's sidewalk that starts there. And that goes then, it opens up access to everything. Um, just because uh, we're not live and, and we don't have uh, too many pictures. Uh, are you able to see mm -hmm. the Google Maps image now? Yeah. So this yes. is the intersection coming from Oxbow. So mm -hmm. straight ahead uh, is Mr. Heidemann's house and Temple Aliyah. And further up is Newman, just to orient you. Mm -hmm. If you turn around, uh, back this way, this is Central Ave facing Dover. Oxbow starts right over on the right side of the screen. And so uh, to put a, a crosswalk on the right here would help uh, pedestrians get from this side uh, all the way into town. Uh, a sidewalk I know has been discussed here before. That's like the top of our wish list. But uh, I recognize there's a lot of priorities and other things. And, and so uh, a crosswalk would certainly help in the meantime. Um, a full crosswalk across this direction uh, so pedestrians could go from one side of Charles River to the other would also be uh, very helpful. But right now, this intersection, while it's not necessarily a massive one, cars are coming from Dover. And so uh, the cars are traveling from Medfield or Dover or who knows where commuting because we've got the trains and they don't. 
And so when you're coming from Dover, the last traffic light before this one is in the center of town. And so people are then going on a road with like no, uh, no speed control, no nothing. There's a couple of relatively new traffic control devices by the Walker School, the warning signs about speed, which if you guys, if this committee did, we'd really yes. appreciate. Thank you. <laughs> um, but once you hit there, you're, you're really kind of coming from like sleepy Dover into a more congested part of Needham. And so uh, when there's no traffic, cars are flying through here. And I know the lieutenant's not on tonight, but we see cars sitting in Aliyah a lot. I don't know if they're running radar or if they're just there as a deterrence for other reasons, but it's certainly speed on the street when there's not traffic is a really scary issue as well. And so, um, you know, I think that it is a controlled intersection and adding the marked uh, crossings would, would for our, our, we would think add a lot of value. Um, so, I also found out today that uh, there's the two other items on tonight's agenda have to do with the same part of town. That was a coincidence. And uh, I did not realize that there's a daycare that's potentially opening uh, 300 feet from this intersection. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, so from a traffic perspective, I'll leave that to the next group. But that's horrifying. When I heard that today, uh, the traffic on this road is already really scary. And that is is a, even more of a reason that we would hope that there would be more protection at this intersection. I don't know whether it will mean it will now be in a school zone, for example. I don't know how any of that works. Um, but it's a scary intersection. And adding you know cars there is only going to heighten that. Um, there was a four-car accident just this week, uh, just uh, by Carlton and Pine, which is not far uh, from this intersection at all. Um, and so uh, it's a, it's for us on this side uh, of the town out here, it's a busy intersection. I know that it's not, uh, you know, uh, the more common one in town. So here's the intersection. You've got uh, Red Wing Bay and Charles River Peninsula. And I just wanted to note that because at the town meeting last year, the town approved spending money to put new parking spaces here. And so this is clearly an area that the town has recognized his importance to the town. Uh, the rail trail runs uh, right here. And so adding uh, an ability for people to come from Newman, from the, the Babson side, from town on the sidewalk out to that area would be great. Ridge Hill Reservation, of course, is just on the other side of this picture off to the left, and so is the dog park. Um, here's Temple Aliyah, and that's also where this new daycare may uh, apparently go. And then, of course, Newman and town are that way. Mm -hmm. um, so this line, this, this rudimentary black line that, that I drew across here, although it looks like my five-year-old drew it in crayon, um, that line, everything below that is basically cut off from sidewalks. And so you've got Oxbow, Fisher, Russell, Walker, um, all of those streets that, that are basically cut off. And these are the homes that that, that affects. And you can just see, uh, obviously, the roof lines there. Um, like I said, there are uh, at least 10 houses with kids uh, in middle school and younger on Oxbow alone. Uh, before COVID, the Newman bus would stop on both Fisher and Oxbow. Uh, and I would assume that once COVID uh, hopefully goes away very soon next year, there'll be uh, a very robust bus activity for Newman on our street. I think the St. Joe's bus also comes down our street. Um, but there's a lot of kids who live here. Um, and if, uh, if there were the ability, the, uh, several of those kids would be able to ride their bikes to Newman. Um, it's about a mile and a half, but that's easily bikeable uh, for a lot of these kids. And the major intersections after this one are protected by uh, either uh, a traffic officer or a crossing uh, guard or somebody. So uh, High Rock has somebody there helping, uh, and outside of the school, they have somebody helping. Mark Tree does not but there's a cr crosswalk at Mark Tree, and so that would be an intersection where the kids would be able to safely cross. So if there were help here, kids could actually bike to school. Uh, High Rock could also be reached very easily by kids from this area. Uh, as it is, a lot of them have to go to the rail trail and kind of make a loop around, and it's okay in some weather, but it's cut off in a lot of other weather. Mm -hmm. um, so here, this just shows you that there's sidewalks everywhere after you get to that. Uh, intersection. And so uh, it would be wonderful to be able to use those. Newman has walk to school 
uh, several times a year and nobody that I know of like from this end participates, but that might be different if it were a little safer. Here's just some more pictures. I won't belabor it. Uh, you're probably familiar with the intersection and I showed you the Google maps a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we took a, we, we put up a change.org poll uh, just to sort of gauge interest in this. And I, uh, I understand from talking to the chair that uh, typically people will come with door-to-door uh, -door signatures for uh, showing the actual neighborhood that's affected. If that's something the committee wants, we're, we're happy to do that. With COVID, we didn't necessarily feel comfortable going door-to-door, -door, but the, the uh, petition that we did put up collected 235 online signatures and a number of comments. Um, I know that Oxbow signed uh, in, in force, uh, as did several other people nearby, uh, based on some of the comments and some of the feedback that we received. So um, I, I would just note that I'm familiar generally with the pedestrian study that the town undertook. And uh, obviously, that's an important study, and it is uh, an important way for the committee to make its decisions. But the intersection may be underrepresented when it comes to uh, pedestrian traffic. So if a study were undertaken, I would just ask you to keep in mind that I think there are a lot of people who don't use the intersection who simply opt out because it's so dangerous. So it's not an intersection like where there's forced pedestrian traffic, but it's an intersection where people would use it. And those that do use it already obviously would still be there. Um, so I really, I appreciate the time. I'm happy to answer any questions that I can about our perspective living here um, and I, appreciate your, your thoughtful consideration. Thank you, David. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, I think it, uh, uh, it's great to illustrate, um, you know, that area. Uh, myself, I'm familiar with that area. I go to the dog park all the time and I come around that, that intersection. Um, but at this point, um, I want to ask any of my fellow committee members um, that would like to either ask questions or, or, or raise any uh, comments or concerns. Um, I think we should go right to asking the engineering questions sure. because yeah. and sidewalks was... and crosswalks tend to go together. So yes. there, there might be just a precluding or, or limiting issue in the current construction of that corner. Excellent, Seth. I was going to be yeah, actually going to, um, you know, Anthony or, or, or Rain, do you want to uh, comment on um, any of the kind of historic um context around this intersection and anything on the master plan uh, going forward um, with regards to either sidewalk, sidewalk or a, um, a controlled side uh, controlled intersection essentially crosswalks if if uh, mr. chair if uh, if I think Tony and I both should speak to this I can speak in a broad sense that um, in the area, that we're just discussing um, that does not have sidewalk or has sidewalk on Central Avenue from Country Way towards the horse farm. Um, two things, um, <clears throat> the town has a five-year capital plan. The select board with DPW has issued somewhat of a directive or a priority that our five-year capital plan um, should be prioritized on existing infrastructure. So infrastructure that's not compliant and is in poor shape, um, we prioritize it and we do have a five-year plan on that. Um, so <clears throat> adding new sidewalks is a topic that's come up a lot, um, but we don't have um, a solid plan on how to address that at this point. There is programs within MassDOT for um, connectivity and expansion uh, for connectivity for bike networks, um, rail trails and pedestrian connections, but it's a, mm -hmm. it's a fairly small budget. It's about 4 million divided up in a territory of district six, which is basically every community inside of 495. Um, so there's very, there's very slim chance on seeking funds from that, but we could under shared streets or some other programs. But those processes take seven or eight years, typically, if it's if it tracks quickly um, or longer and the funds are slight. So on a broad scope, um, <clears throat> on the committee's note, I, I think it, this is 
um, one of those large type projects that's almost outside of um, the scope for me to answer directly. But the intersection uh, that we may be able to do some relief, but um, uh, I would rely on engineering to, to summarize that. Sure. Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, if, if a crosswalk were to be added at that intersection, <clears throat> the traffic signals would have to be modified. So the, the that, that control box wouldn't wouldn't be able to do like you'd have to upgrade the signal system or the uh, okay okay yep it, it would have to add a pedestrian phase and um, you know and all of the uh, equipment that goes with it that the the walk don't walk the countdown mm -hmm. the audible signals etc. Okay, is that something that um, is has been on any of the plans of recently? Because I, I I do have to say that that intersection I, I'm not to you know that that is a um, pretty busy intersection um, that, you know that I've seen. But I don't know is that has that been on any forecasted plans? Yeah. And I realize that that is that exceeds the Tmax budget. Like I, I get that um, you know, and I'm I'm tongue in cheek there. But is there any sort of um, that you know, has there been a sort of movement on or identifying that intersection as as putting in a, a signalized crosswalk? Nope. There's no plans to do anything at that intersection. The next intersection on the list is Great Plain and Central. And that's for a reconstruction. And then the intersection after that, I believe, is Gould and Central. And then the intersection after that, I think, is Great Plain and Greendale. And each of these is how long? What's 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 the life cycle of each of the intersections? It's one year. Well, the, on the capital plan, right. on the yes. CMP, yep. the next yep. one, which is up, is um, Great Plain and Central. So coming up for a vote uh, as to whether or not they'll fund it uh, from town meeting. Town meeting, right, yep. Great Plain Avenue and Central. Okay. So, so to come back to um, David's issues, you know, does anything come to mind in terms of offering pedestrian safety in that intersection? Are there any paint solutions? Are there any sign solutions or, uh, you know, clearly we're not gonna, the town's not gonna jump in and, and rebuild that intersection for, for quite a while. So, um, yeah, no, you can't, you can't add a crosswalk at a signalized intersection without modifying without the signals. And, and um, installing the proper infrastructure, which is curb cuts, is uh, mm -hmm. when you do a crosswalk, you have to have yeah. curb cuts, handicap sure. ramp, and technically it's got to lead to you know paved surfaces. So um, not having any of that um, sidewalk infrastructure close by is a is a massive um, undertaking. And it's not in any plans at this point. Is there Mr. any Chair? other? Oh, go ahead, sir. Slazers, go ahead. May I just? May I, uh, so I understand the, the. It's helpful to to hear, obviously, the financial constraints and that the town does have these plans, uh, and I and I appreciate if there's anything that could be done to add us to consideration for the plan, even if it's years from now, um, but also if there's signage, if there's anything that could be done or even alternative areas where there's not a controlled intersection, but where a crosswalk could be added. For example, if you could even put one, you know, at Pine, uh, it gives us the ability to, to come out 
you know, through the woods and get across to the end of pine by the dog park. And like, it's, it's, there's the, the town trails back through that way. It just gives more options. Cause right now, like we're literally just, we're, we're trapped down here. So if, if, if that intersection's a loser, uh, if there's anything else that can be done um, just because it's, I would, I would really appreciate any sure. suggestions that the experience has. No, I know that. So, so crosswalks have certain requirements, and I know the town has kind of adopted and went through. Um, uh, they had a consultant during the last pedestrian safety um, audit and had uh, and had kind of adopted a a process for determination and criteria for for a crosswalk. Uh, I kind of ask either um, uh, Mr. Degazio or or, or or Ryan, do we have? Do you know if there's any area around there? that would qualify for an unsignalized crosswalk in that area that would be possible is there or, or you know or not i'm not sure just knowing what you know of the of the of the process to to install is there anything that could be done short term other than obviously putting this intersection on you know the capital plan long term from, from Mr. Chair, from a highway um, superintendent's perspective, uh, I don't see it. I, I would also ask engineering. <clears throat> we are looking at uh, potentially improving some of the sidewalk from Country Way, as I said, past the Temple um, towards Pine Street, which is existing. However, there's some historical restrictions. So DPW is revisiting that with some fresh eyes We'd take a few uh, berm trees and at least try to provide release between those neighborhoods because there is um, a paved area that um, I'm told is is technically not a sidewalk, but I'm seeking to see if we could restore that and go all the way to Country Way and put up um, handicap ramps on Central at Country and and downward to improve that section. Any other members of the committee? Uh, Mr. Chair? Sir. Um, the, I don't believe that there is actually an, uh, uh, any other area, uh, any other intersection, unsignalized intersection. Um, we have to remember that uh, Central Avenue is speed zoned. So the speed varies 35, 40 miles per hour. <laughs> And that really uh, has a large impact um, on where you can put a crosswalk. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad you brought up the uh, crosswalk policy and the townwide uh, pedestrian safety audit. Um, I don't believe that there is another location um, that would meet that policy you would actually have to install traffic signals. Okay. So the best place to put a crosswalk would be at the signal at the line. Signal. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is Matthew Heideman. I, I don't mean to, I know I'm, I'm, I'm here for another topic, but I, I do kind of live very closely to Mr. Lazarus. The biggest concern here is child safety. And my concern is, is how does the town take into account child safety in this instance, and this is going to get to my point later um, um, on in this, um, obviously in this in this meeting. But again, child safety is very important, and there's a lot of children down at this end of the Central Avenue. Yeah, I, I I recognize that point. Um, obviously, the the. Um, you know, we, we need to figure out a what the cost is, whatever what, what everything is. I, I I get that, and and at this point, actually, what I can you know, what I can say is uh, to Daphne, are there are there um, members of the public that wanted to speak on this particular issue that are because I, I can take Matthew's comment and put that in his public comment for for this specific issue. Oh, I think you're on mute. You're muted. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm mute. There are 17 attendees, Mr. Chair, and none have their hands up. 
at this moment. So I will say that if anyone wants to comment on this specific matter, please use the raise hand icon. All right, there's Tara Kylene. I'm going to promote her. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to limit, uh, we'll do an open There's comment here. Okay. okay. And we'll do a uh, three minute comment period. Kylene, could you, once you're, let's see, is she on? I did promote her. We have another person who has raised her hand. I'll attempt to make her a panelist. And uh, her name is um, uh, Aiden Shamas. And I see that he has successfully come on as has been promoted as a panelist. Please unmute. Aiden, if you could unmute and you have about, uh, hi, you have three minutes and the floor is yours. If you could just hi. say your name and your address, sir. Sure, uh, my name is Eitan Shamash. I live at 76 Oxbow Road. I'm one of the, uh, the Oxbow crew um, on, the, on the line here. Um, I wanted to um, sort of voice my support for Dave's uh, proposition. We also have three kids on the street. Um, we spend a lot of time um, sort of outdoors and commuting between here, the rail trail um, in Temple Aliyah and the, the neighborhoods um, beyond. Uh, the Carlton and sort of country way area. Um, and it, 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 we have three young kids and, and it would also be, you know, extremely helpful for, for us and our family and our young children uh, to have uh, some solution to address this. And I, I also appreciate that um, from a process and procedural and a resourcing standpoint, these things take time and need organization. Um, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows that there is a community of folks here uh, that are in support of this and whose lives this would impact. Um, as, a, as a thought, um, something that, that might be helpful is some sort of signage. I, I don't spend a lot of uh, time in sort of traffic committee, so I'm not sure what, what, um, what the ramifications are of that request, uh, but something sort of signifying that there are children in the area um, that are playing, our kids do play, um, on Oxbow, at least in the street quite a bit, um, or, you know, in our neighbor, in our, excuse me, in our yards, um, and anything to sort of draw attention uh, to the fact that there are children and young children at play um, would, would potentially give us at least some sort of comfort. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Thank you. Chair, there's another hands up, a Tara Kylene, I believe that's who I was trying to sure. promote previously, so I'm going to attempt to promote her again. Kylene, you uh, let's see. Yep, she has now been promoted. Kylene. Way, especially country way entering onto central is dangerous intersection right there. So I would love if people can reassess the sidewalks, especially on central and even on country way. Cars fly around here because we're so far away from the from town and they're just speeding along. So I would really appreciate people looking at that. Thank you. Kylie, could you please, Tara, could you please ident uh, give us your address, please? Sure, 339 Country Way. Thank you. Thank you for your help. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Mr. Chair, we have another race. No, um, we have another uh, raised hand. I'm going to go ahead and, and promote that person. And that's uh, C.H. John. <clears throat> if 
Paige John, would you please uh, unmute? CJ John, you're you please unmute or turn on your video. Maybe we can come back. Is there are there any other members of the public? Um, no, there are no other okay. raised hands from the public. All right. At this point, um, are there any I'm members? Here. Of, oh, did that work? Yeah, Sean, we can hear you now. Yes. Okay. And so my you name can just is identify yourself and your uh, just address other than absolutely. CFM. My name is Carl Jonathan, seventeen twenty nine Central Avenue, directly across from Country Way. What was the address again, please? Seventeen twenty nine Central Avenue. Thank you. So, having listened to all the concerns about traffic, the intersection, crosswalks, and everything else, I guess my real question is this. Who controls the speed limit directly after Country Way when it says step on the pedal because it's 40 miles an hour now? When in fact, by the time people get here, actually prior to the traffic light, but now that the traffic light at least has been installed, um, 40 means 50. So I'm just curious, why isn't Central Avenue 30 miles an hour the entire way? Because as soon as you get to just prior to recycling, as you come up the incline, it says 30 miles an hour. Sure. Um, uh, either Tony or Ryan, do you want to just talk about the speed zone um, uh, and how that's determined? Because it is a speed zone road. Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Central Avenue was speed zoned uh, quite a while ago. Uh, to facilitate the movement of traffic. That's, that's basically what speed zoning is for. That, um, I'm not certain if it's the, uh, uh, the state that actually created that regulation or if the town created the regulation and then it was approved by the state. The town does not have the authority uh, to create speed zones. We can perform studies, uh, but then that information has to go to the state for their approval. And then they tell us uh, what the speed limits will be. So I, I don't uh, see any way of lowering the speed limit on a speed zone street. Um, typically it's, it goes the other way. Uh, when you go and take a, uh, a look at it, you study it again, typically the speed limits go up. They don't go down. So, uh, I wouldn't pursue <laughs> trying to re-speed zone the street. Uh, but I would like to make a suggestion. Uh, and it is in line with uh, Ryan Hoyland's uh, statement uh, that it's probably going to take seven or eight years before we get to this intersection financially. Uh, but we can add it to the capital plan. Uh, that certainly is something that we could do. So is Central Avenue a town road or a state road? It's a town road. So who takes into consideration that Sunita Williams School has been built now and there's a proposed daycare at 1688 Central Avenue and things like that where traffic has obviously over the last couple of years increased dramatically. You still have to go to state approval to lower the speed limit? Uh, you can't lower the speed limit. I'm telling you, it, it, it's, it's almost impossible to do that. You, you just cannot uh, uh, lower it. If you were to go study it, it would go higher. Even, uh, I think somebody said tonight, uh, so even though it says 40, people go 50. 
Okay, well, that, that's what gets taken into consideration in a speed zone study. So you, you really don't want to um, do a speed zone study and submit it to the state uh, because the speed limits will probably go higher than where they are today. Uh, the, be the best way to deal with, the, uh, I think, the crosswalk is to uh, put it on the capital list at the intersection of Charles River and Central, where the existing uh, traffic signals are, and then uh, install a uh, pedestrian phase at the signal and the related equipment uh, that goes with it, uh, you know, for people to press a button, uh, stop the traffic, mm -hmm. and um, access the crosswalks. Great. Thank you. And then I think this will end unless we have another hand on com public comment. We'll end the pu public comment on you this issue. You have two hands raised. Um, let me go ahead and promote. There's the Lauren. The Lauren going to go ahead and promote her to a panelist. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You have the floor. Great. We have three minutes. Uh, so we live at 94 Oxbow Road. Um, we too are part of the Oxbow crew um, who are all rooting for this. <laughs> um, I just sort of want to go on record just really, really emphasizing the fact that there are so many kids around here just on Oxbow alone but I know on the surrounding streets as well um, there's so many kids who would benefit from this um, but I mean I know we when we my husband and I walk to Temple Aliyah on high holidays and when you know I've actually tried to take all four we have four kids and and four dogs and I've tried to take my four dogs to the park um, by walking there because it is so close to us, but it's very difficult to do that when you know there's the sidewalks or crosswalks. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of, we like die on the side road or we die crossing the road to get to the sidewalk. You get my point. Um, <laughs> So we're just, we're, we're really rooting for something to be done. I, I understand, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. Um, but if, if, if it can just be put, you know, somewhere on the list of things mm -hmm. to look at um, and get done, uh, it would, it, we'd really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah. Thank you, Vaughn, for the comment. And Daphne, you said there was- Mr. Another... Chair, there's one more. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and promote this person as a panelist. Thank you, Lauren. Oh. Hi, am I on? Yes, Ms. McFarland, oh, yes. Great, thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Beth McFarland and I live at 99 Oxbow Road. And we've had this issue for years. My husband and I, we moved here about 17 years ago. When we got to Oxbow, that intersection didn't even have a traffic light. It had stop. It had two stop signs. We used to be on Oxbow Road. We could hear the tires screech and accidents actually happen at that intersection. We have never allowed one of our four children to walk to school. It's not even an option. It's the most unsafe area with no crosswalks. Once you get beyond that intersection, there's not a crosswalk on either side. So it's very dangerous for the kids. We're lucky enough that when we have had to venture that way, the neighbors allow us to walk on their grass to get over there. And then it's like a game of chicken getting across that intersection, whether you run like heck diagonally or you try to make it across both ways. I understand that there's all kinds of approvals needed. I think a pedestrian light is the minimal we should be able to get because it is a safety issue. Um, I'd hate to see a kid ever get hit by a car because those cars are flying there. My oldest, who's now a freshman in college, we were so excited when he finally got to play baseball over at Walker Park, 
but there's no safe way to get over there. There's no safe way. And I think that's ridiculous. We are people that live in Needham and we can't enjoy the benefits. Like um, one of the other parents had said, when they have walked to school day, that has never been an option for our kids. I don't even let my middle schoolers do that. It took to high school when I would let my oldest venture on a bike because it was so dangerous to cross Central Ave. I hear that we would be placed on a list with other projects that are fixing existing safety measures where we don't even have those. So that's, you know, kind of a bit concerning. But that's, I just wanted that to go on record and add to the, to the group. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank um, you, Ms. Mrs. McFarland, could I have your address again, please? Nine Ox, sorry, it's 99 Oxbow Road. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. So at this point, I will close the public comment on, on this specific issue, and I recognize uh, Seth. So I, I'm just wondering, uh, Mr. Chairman, if, you know, clearly this is heading toward being a capital expense. And as frustrating as it is not to be able to offer for the traffic committee to offer an answer, uh, is this something we should really recommend be brought to the board of selectmen, the select board? I, I would support that um, because I think that we would need to figure out how to, to um, get this on some sort of, um, you know, plan, um, you know, and, and is that something that's, um, do I, is that, is that a motion that you want to see if we want to bring or do you want it to be bring so I was going to ask you if we need to yeah. make that motion or if, if the petitioners essentially should, should in this case, uh, bypass our committee and, and get to the town. Sure. And well, first, um, uh, Mr. Lecoso, is, 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 can we say, hey, can we put this on the master plan? Is that something that, you know, does, what is the process for doing that? If the committee uh, does want to add it to the capital plan, mm -hmm. the, the CIP, uh, we would add it to the list of intersections that we have. Yep. We being the DPW, so it would become a proposed uh, project, and that will go through the the standard review process with the select board and then the finance committee and so forth. The only the only item that I can the only thing I can say related to it uh, to reiterate Ryan's comment, uh, it's not likely to get on there until seven or eight years. We have a five-year plan in the book that actually gets published, mm -hmm. but our list is actually longer than that. So I would like to, for just, you know, for the sake of, of this, I would like to make a motion to get this intersection on that list. And then, you know, the petitioners can either, you know, through through their town meeting members or through the select board decide to, you know, see what they can do to prioritize that, but at least getting it on the list, I would like to make a motion to uh, put a signalized intersection um, uh, at that um, intersection of Charles, uh, Charles River and Central. Mr. Chairman, do you mean uh, you'd like to add a pedestrian phase to the existing traffic signal? A pedestrian phase to the, yes, and a crosswalk to the, to the addition, to the existing signal, yes. Uh, I'll second that, although I see that Rain has, has his hand up. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, just before we take a vote for, <clears throat> um, the scope and limit, um, if we could specify, would be extremely helpful. Um, this committee and others in town always take these things extremely seriously. Mm -hmm. As as highway superintendent that has some influence on this five-year capital plan, we have a lot of engineering, um, private sector engineering um, studies that have been done town-wide. Currently, our list for existing backlog of sidewalk is about 40 years out. And we're, we're, so we're struggling with, uh, do we 
eliminate some sidewalk in town. But in other words, uh, some of these are neighborhood streets with low volume traffic. Mm -hmm. Do one side, not the other, because it, it's not manageable. So those are the um, things that um, we're having those conversations and want to move forward, which would require a committee because of it's also gets highly political on how to establish these programs. But um, having a program where existing with existing budget is about 40 years out um, is, is troubling. So we are working um, behind the scenes, but I think that's, I wanted to throw it out there, use I keep it um, somewhat more internal. Um, but um, so I didn't want to have people misled that we put it on a list and it's going to track through quickly. We have some very serious infrastructure challenges and financially on how to move forward on existing and then adding is kind of in a different bucket. But there is there is potential. It just has to be um, those conversations uh, townwide with the correct boards and citizens. Given the fact that uh, I think there was a motion in a second, I will take that as a moment of discussion. Um, so I will open up and say, is there any additional discussion um, on the motion um, that was seconded? And and Ryan, I'll, I'll take your comment as a discussion uh, point uh, and, 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 a, and a valid point. Any other members have um, a comment on the motion we have? Um, okay, so having none, um, we will we will continue on that um, on that motion. Daphne, can we um, do a roll call? Mr. Delgado. Aye. Mr. Hoyland. Aye. Mr. McCollin. Aye. Mr. Bauer. Aye. Ms. Mullen. Aye. The motion passes. So, like I said, um, Mr. Lazarus, um, you know, and, and and I have to keep in contest completely. I mean, what this is, we, this is our endorsement, TMAX endorsement of you know something to be done here and and push pushing this in the pipeline. This is not something that's going to be, you know, um, obviously put in anytime uh, soon. But at least at this point, there there th this has been endorsed at least by the by the TMAC and. You know, a lot of things happen and prioritization and funding and granting in seven years from now, who knows, but at least it is this, this kind of puts that motion, um, you know, uh, towards saying that this is this is something that we, it, this is a valid concern. Uh, I would just thank the chair and the committee. We really appreciate being heard and the opportunity to discuss it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it, as Heather Simons, I should, does she ever come on board? Mr. Chair, um, Rana just, uh, she, she communicated with me that Heather Simmons has mm -hmm. asked to reschedule this meeting to next month. So be it, well, uh, I approve that for, for rescheduling. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll move to item number six, um, Matthew Heidman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your time. And thank you for all of the committee members taking the time this evening to speak with us. Um, so I, I do have a set of slides that I'd like to share, but um, thank you for actually this, this committee actually introducing us to just some new neighbors that we don't necessarily see all the time. So um, thank you to um, Mr. Lazarus and the Oxbow community. We're, we're happy to kind of, you know, maybe join forces here. But um, the reason I wanted to present to the committee this evening was a recommendation from somebody that actually understands the town and town, uh, uh, town government and how things operate. And I've got a set of slides here. Um, I'm going to share my screen if you guys don't mind. Sure. Um, if it'll allow me to. Let's see, that's nah, not going to allow me to. Anyway, if 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 I can submit this via email, I can get it onto the public record that way. If that's if that's better for you, because it's not going to allow me to share that on my right permission set up. We can do that. For um, but anyway, um, okay, great. So we, the neighbors of, or the neighborhoods of 1688 Central Avenue, um, for, for those of you that aren't familiar with what is going on at 1688 uh, Central Avenue, is uh, town selectman and 2B chairman um, of the town selectman, Mr. Matt Borelli, who is also a developer in town, 
um, is building a 9,960 square foot daycare facility at 1688 Central Avenue, which is about a three acre lot um, that used to be uh, the original farmhouse for this particular area. Um, that daycare facility is gonna house up to about 100 kids of which um, is going to potentially cause about 100 cars in the morning, about 100 cars in the afternoon for drop off and pickup. Additionally, I've been informed that the daycare facility that is actually moving into this, this area um, is already an established daycare facility in Needham. Um, and they also have a after school program, which also has about three uh, buses for after school uh, programs. So the neighborhood, um, I understand that this, this committee is more of a reactionary um, type committee and you guys are dealing with problems that are here today, but I wanted to get it on public record that basically says, this is going to be a massive issue coming up, uh, coming forward. Um, based upon, you know, putting, adding a little additional fuel to the fire from Mr. Lazarus presentation, um, this adds significant amounts of traffic to this end of Central Avenue, where we feel that the infrastructure that is currently here on this facility at this end of Central Avenue is not equipped to handle another additional 100 cars in the morning and 100 cars in the evening um, or, or public busing in, of, any, of any kind. Um, Mr. Borelli has basically assured that the uh, assured the neighborhood that he is doing a traffic study. Um, of which we have not received a copy of as of yet, but um, we plan to. Uh, the, the neighborhood is meeting with Mr. Mr. Borelli at some point in the next two weeks, um, where hopefully he will produce this traffic study. Again, I am not sure that this traffic study is going to take into account the current pandemic um, aspects and the reduction uh, in traffic. Um, and um, so we're a little concerned about those items. Um, additionally, we feel that it is going to cause significant backups on Carlton, Pine Street, Country Way, Central Avenue, Charles River Street, South Street. It's gonna have massive impacts to South Street because again, Central Avenue is the cut through street. I mean, I've talked to several neighbors, I've talked to several people that literally look out of their driveway and say, oh my God, Central's crazy because it's already crazy down near the recycling center. It's already crazy at Newman. It's already crazy at Sunita Williams. Um, literally are thinking that South Street is going to be the potential um, impact of handling all of these additional cars, right? As all of us know, South Street is nowhere near handled or, or, or equipped to handle an additional impact of cars. So this again is a, we kind of are wanting to get this on public record because again, these are the, these are the issues you guys are going to be dealing with if this daycare facility is actually built. Um, one of the things we've been informed with is that they think that just having staggered drop-off times, which we've been informed with by official letter, is going to reduce the amount of traffic. Sure, it will, but from the hours of 6.30 to 8.30, literally three, four weeks ago when I was out snowblowing my driveway, and this is during a pandemic, and I live at 1708 Central, which is right there, 20 cars back to back to back every five minutes went by between the hours of seven to seven to eight o'clock. I mean, legit, every five minutes and that's during a pandemic. It's worse, much, much worse during a, a regular normal um, hours. I apologize for all of the, 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 the talking here but I, we have quite a few uh, talking points. Um, again, um, so I talked about the number of cars. Um, uh, the other thing is, you know, we're also concerned that there's probably going to need be a need for a traffic detail, right? Um, cars turning in and off of Central Avenue, especially if you're on the left side of the road or the right side of the road turning left or across. We're, we're, still, we're uh, seriously um, concerned um, that, you know, it's going to require a traffic detail of which, again, is going to cause more and more backups and more and more traffic of which it's going to continue to extend at that traffic light down Charles River. Um, again, um, you know, sidewalks come into play, right? I mean, more cars on there, like child safety and all of this other stuff that we're sitting here talking about earlier becomes a major concern. There's more cars, there's more, there's more reason for risk. And again, I have three, I have three kids, 12 year old, I have a 12 year old and two eight year olds. My 12 year old bikes to High Rock on a regular basis. There is a lack of infrastructure at this end of Central. <clears throat> um, and then I'll just say the last comment that I do have um, and I will sit there and say that there are several people from the neighborhood who were on this call. 
um, that will have significant um, concerns about this and will want to be, be heard this evening as well. Um, Mr. Borelli did say that he got some initial feedback from the traffic study. He did say that the, the level of service will not be degraded. I don't know what that means. But again, our abilities to get fire and ambulances and polices, I mean, in my view, you add more cars, I don't understand how level of service can be degraded. That just doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. Um, the last thing I'll say is there is going to be a, a sewer installation from 1688. And I, I don't, this, this might be a traffic management issue sooner rather than later, but there will be added of sewer from the country way area to 1688 central. Um, I don't know if you guys actually care about this, but um, based upon what we're seeing on South Street with all of the road tear ups and all of that, you know, the, the residents around here just wanna make sure that that, that road is fully repaired uh, to, to um, it's, it's um, bet, hopefully better than it is now because it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. But anyway, that's my, that's my soapbox. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get these talking points to the official um, chair push and whoever that is. I don't know if it's Rana, but I can get all mm -hmm. of these bullet points to somebody. And I think if you get so, that to Rana, that she can kind uh, of she can get that to Daffy to, to enter into the mix. Yeah. Um, thank you, Matthew. Um, at this point, um, any members of the committee um, have any comment with regards to this? Before I make a comment, Mr. Chair. Recognizing uh, Tony DeCazio, yes. Um, we are aware of the daycare project. I understand that it's gonna be submitted to the planning board uh, as an application sometime in March and that the hearing is going to be in April. Any other members of the committee? Um, have a comment. So first, uh, obviously, um, thank you, um, you know, for this. And, and before before we, we open to public comment, um, this is obviously something that's not in the purview of, of, of TMAC. We, we, we wouldn't be able to to um, stop somebody from coming in. That's obviously this is if it's being submitted to planning, planning goes through the process. Any traffic counts would be done by the developer, probably by a private contractor, you know, and submitted to wouldn't be wouldn't be town resources and would be submitted to uh, the planning board. Um, but that's I just wanted to, 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 to point that out. Um, obviously, we need to be cognizant of, you know, the amount of, of, of cars and traffic, and this could very well become an issue that, you know, in, in a year or two, um, you know, we're, we're trying to sit in piecemeal trying to figure out a solution um, for, for increased volume. But um, obviously, the planning board is, 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 is something that I would urge you to and, 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 any, and any supporters to, to contact at, at an open meeting. Um, but knowing that we can't probably do any mitigation right now, other than to get on the record, um, I, I, I open up to for Daphne. Is there anyone with a with a hand up that wants to speak on this issue? There is a Holly Clark. There's three actually three yep, hands I up. I will I will promote a Holly Clark. Great. So Ms. Clark, well, we have uh, three minutes once you um, are connected. Thank you. Please unmute, Ms. Clark. Hi, unmute. can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, okay, so my name is Holly Clark. I live at 1652 Central Avenue, which is just on the other side of Temple Aliyah. Um, and by the way, I have a path in front of my house, but this is the first day I've ever heard that I have a sidewalk. So there is no actual sidewalk there as we discuss this. So one question I have for the first, a question is, are there traffic counts that have been done by the committee um, for this, for, for Central Avenue on this side from, let's say from the transfer station down to the Dover line? So, Has the committee ever? 
So this, I'm just, I, Ms. Ms. Clark, I, I'm, so um, I, I know the, the petitioner is actually, um, uh, Mr. Heidelman, this is actually a public comment, so we're not really oh, okay. interacting sure. back and okay. forth. However, so, however, I do know that there have been in the past, but yes, I just, so I could informally okay. answer so you, yes, could, but this uh, is really right. for comment. Okay, so, uh, so the comment that I have is one of the, one of the concerns, obviously, is that, um, this is a central avenue is busy from i would say 6 30 in the morning till quarter to nine at my house i have seen the traffic literally stopped and as i said i'm at i'm at the corner of carlton and central and it used to be that it would stop you could get closer to marked tree and then it's moved down so bringing you know another hundred cars that have to both go into that driveway and come out of the driveway is a significant concern for folks that live on the street of how, how are we gonna get in and out of our driveway? For the folks that are on the opposite side, how are they gonna get in and out? And it, it would, I would hope that the members of this committee or this committee, I realize that folks come to you and say, please help me. You know, Can we have a sign? Can we have a traffic thing? Um, but if there is an expertise here to, um, to be shared as to whether there are any mitigation measures available. I mean, at, when we did the Sunita Williams School, which is again on Central, the road could be widened because it was a town project and the town did it and there was actually more room there. Um, I, I just hope that, um, the concerns of the neighborhood, um, which are very real, and anyone that has driven on Central Avenue would understand that it is, these are, are legitimate concerns. Um, the trap, I had heard the same schedule, thank you, about it going to the planning board. I had not, um, I don't know if that is, it remains uh, the schedule. Um, and I do understand that Mr. Borelli is saying that the lack of service hasn't been impacted. I don't know what that signifies. I don't know if it means that the service is terrible and will remain so, or if it's you know at a sea level and it'll stay at a sea level. But um, if if what I guess I'm asking is if this committee can share its expertise or the real difficulty that this would present, because I mean we just told folks down the road there's nothing that can be done to help them. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Daphne, is there a... Yes, there's one more. Uh, Carl uh, Johansson is, is uh, going to be promoted. Mr. Uh, Carl, could you please unmute? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Great. Okay. Carl Johnson, 1729 Central Avenue. So how do I expand on all of this? We're going to have 100 plus cars going to a daycare. The rumor has it that that facility is actually going to expand to another 10,000 square feet, which is going to introduce another 100 cars or more down the road by Mr. Borelli. If you take the traffic level coming from the other side, coming from um, uh, towards Dover, when people realize that the traffic is all backed up outside of the daycare, which is going to happen, they're all gonna cut down Pine Street. They're gonna go down Pine Street and they're either gonna go out Charles River Street or they're gonna loop back around and go to the back of the traffic light and come right, right back out and around. Uh, I'm really concerned as I raised about the 40 mile an hour speed limit, which 
allegedly can't be corrected without going to the state level. So now at drop off at 6.30 to 8.30 in the morning, cars are gonna come through this traffic light when it's a green light and they're gonna do, be doing at least 30 or 40 miles an hour going past this daycare that's going to be there. This is going to create a real problem in my opinion. That's it. Thank you for, uh, for the comments. Um, Daphne, are there any more comments? Uh, yes, one more. Right. That's Steve. That's Steve. Steve, I think you're on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you and see you. Uh, hi, I'm Steve Jonas. I'll be brief because my wife, Holly Clark, just spoke. We both live at 1652 Central Avenue, and I'm not going to go through what she went through. I um, obviously agree with her. Um, I, I just want to add a couple of uh, points here. As the commuting member of the family, or at least the pre-pandemic commuting member of the family, um, number one, whatever traffic study is done here um, is not realistic if it's done with, with counts during the pandemic. I think that's a point that Matthew made before, but we, we would really hope that, um, you know, whatever sort of limitations there are on your role as a committee in this context, that um, you could lend the expertise you have as the traffic management advisory committee to ensure that uh, a realistic traffic study is done here. I, I think you hear skepticism that if a realistic study were done, that you could reach any conclusion that this could be mitigated. Um, and it would also be helpful to have your expertise at the appropriate time about what level of service degradation really means. I got to say that having being one of the folks who has to make a right turn out of my driveway to get into that parking lot between 630 and say 830 uh, on a weekday, um, I, th that has to be a level of service F. I'm not an expert. It may be the town engineer or the highway folks will say otherwise, but that has got to be a failure of service, at least at that level. And I know that there are those failures going all the way down Central Avenue, uh, a street that, that you know, has, has just been burdened and burdened and more burdened over time with every major construction project that you put on there. Um, so if Mr. Borelli is saying that the level of service is not degraded because what was an F will remain an F, that's not, much solace for us, and it would be helpful, again, to the extent you all could see your way to speak to that issue, uh, to have you do that. And then the last, the last thing I would say, again, as a, as a commuter, um, uh, again, you know, when, when the world opens up again, I travel, as do many, uh, from this part of Central Avenue down Central Avenue, at times, um, uh, all the way past, uh, past uh, the, the, uh, the dump, past uh, uh, Newman, uh, past the Volante light, past Williams now, past Elliott, um, and it's a nightmare. Um, and you really just have to avoid it if you possibly can. And it's not, to be honest, it's not... Um, uh, a kind of, it's not a shining light of city planning, uh, the burdens that, that uh, Central Avenue has. Now, we live with that, it's there. Um, people will go down different streets, as one of, one of the folks said. Um, but to add a couple of hundred um, uh, cars in each direction, or a couple of hundred uh, cars, uh, between the morning and the evening commute, and then maybe an expansion of the facility thereafter, which of course will be much more difficult uh, to do anything about once the facility is already built, because that's the nature of these things. We, we would really ask that, that um, 
during this process that we get, you know, a, a meaningful uh, uh, review of this uh, and one, you know, one that really takes into account the burdens that are already on the street and they're almost certain to, to increase uh, when this thing is built. So thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see any more hands um, up. So at this point, I will close the public comment um, and uh, open to any of the committee members who have uh, comments, uh, motions, uh, questions, et cetera. So I have a question and a, a comment, Justin. Sure. Um, one is, and this might be small reassurance, but I live in a neighborhood at the other end of town uh, that faced a major residential construction project on Greendale Ave. And uh, concerned neighbors shared a lot of projected nightmares um, that have not come to fruition. So I, I just wanna say sometimes your fears about future traffic issues, you know, may not play out exactly the way you're anticipating. Um, and the other is, is more of a helpful comment, which is uh, maybe our, our town engineers can speak to what data is available from, are, are all past traffic studies open to the public? Is this something that the petitioners can, uh, you know, research with your assistance in some way? Um, certainly we want to I mean, the, the, the notion that a traffic study would be done during the pandemic is a completely legitimate concern. Um, and so any existing relevant data that we, you know, that the town can share, um, I'm just wondering if you can tell yeah. how, how that access might happen. Recognizing Hannah, yeah, Tony. <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, <clears throat> the appropriate uh, process for this is through the planning board. Uh, the planning board is an elected board. Mm -hmm. They are completely uh, separate and distinct from the select board. Uh, when they receive an application, they forward those materials uh, to the engineering division uh, for review. It's uh, very transparent, especially with um, electronic uh, filings these days. You can get all of the materials. Um, one of the things that the town is very aware of um, is the impact of uh, COVID-19 on traffic flow. And the traffic study does have to take that into consideration. When they submit the traffic study, if it doesn't, that'll be one of the comments that we're going to make. Um, we had similar situation over at the Muzzy Ford uh, rezoning uh, proposal, and that actually was one of the issues, uh, was uh, they had to make adjustments for the, the, uh, the COVID-19 impact. I don't see why this should be any different. Mm -hmm. um, and it will go through the review procedure. Uh, there will be a, a, a public hearing it will be online because the planning board is doing them online these days. Um, so, I mean, at this point, there isn't anything to look at. I, I don't, there, we don't have any application materials uh, to review. So uh, we're just gonna have to wait until they submit an application uh, so that we can take a look at it. And the application, by the way, it's comprehensive. It's not just traffic. It also includes the sewer, which I believe somebody uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, it includes the development uh, itself, uh, handicap accessibility. And I mean, there's just, 
there's a whole host of things that that have to be reviewed. Um, so I fully expect that that review will follow the standard review that we always do for every project or any project uh, that's submitted by a developer. I did want to mention one other thing. Somebody had uh, mentioned that uh, they thought there was a sidewalk on S Central Avenue near Carlton Drive. Uh, there is no sidewalk on Central Avenue. Uh, it's that that pathway, uh, they call it a, um, right. a horse okay. trail <laughs> is, excuse me? They call it a horse trail is uh, what they call it. Um, because it, it absolutely does not meet any of the uh, ADA uh, criteria for a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you. Uh, any other members um, of the committee for comments? So without that, I think, um, uh, Mr. Hyman, um, I, I think we obviously wanted to get some, you know, I'm glad some uh, your supporters were able to, were able to hear it in public record. Um, this is something I think, um, as, as uh, the town engineer had said, that apparently it's not even submitted to, to, or at least the planning board hasn't submitted to the engineering department as of yet any documents um, for, for approval. But obviously it'll, it'll go through that planning board process. Um, and that process, um, you know, is obviously robust, et cetera. But, um, you know, we obviously, we, we, we wish you good luck with that, but as a committee, we, we, you know, we can do other than, you know, when the town does come and they sometimes do ask, um, you know, for our, um, uh, you know, interpretation or at least some of the members on this committee for, uh, for uh, at least taking a look at some, uh, at some studies, obviously the, the uh, highway and the engineering division. Um, but um, at this point, I don't think that we can necessarily do any action tonight, but uh, other than just listening and, and and understanding. Yeah, and no, we, we the neighbors of, of 1688, we do appreciate you guys listening. Again, this was more for your information that we see a potential issue, right? And, and Mr. Bauer, I really appreciate your, your comments uh, about Greendale. I, I trust me, I traveled that road several times going, you know, bringing kids to and from hockey. So I, I totally understand what you were dealing with. Um, I, I hope you're right. I, I really do hope you're right that that, that this is not going to be an issue and that none of this is going to be a told, a told I told you so type moment um, where we're back here in a year from now having the same conversation. So I appreciate you, I appreciate everybody's time um, and, and everybody's uh, understanding and, and listening and, you know, town engineers, go do your magic and, and hopefully uh, everybody comes out a winner on this one. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair and Recording Secretary, it appears that Ms. Heather Simmons was able to join us. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so, uh, so Ms. Simmons, if you want to uh, um, think about your item, we actually have um, in the beginning anywhere in here, we, we, the committee is aware of, uh, of the issues that were submitted, but we'll give you, um, uh, you know, the, the Floor is yours to talk about um, your petition. Oh, I think you're on mute. I'm mute. Yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so I live at on Whitman Road, right <laughs> off of Charles River Street, and the stretch of Charles River that goes by Ridge Hill Reservation, and. In the time I've lived here, I've lived here for about five years. There's been two deer in that stretch that have been um, hit and killed by cars and I, that I know of. And then I've come very close myself to hitting a deer once like it ran in front of me and they really just come right out of the woods. Um, and they're really hidden until the last possible moment. So I don't know if there's anything that can be done about it or not. I don't know how well deer crossing signs actually work or um, I, there's no uh, 
speed limit sign posted there as to what the speed limit is. I know by the dump, it gets reduced to 30 miles an hour. I don't know if that would help or not. Um, and I do, I am aware from all of the snowshoeing I've been doing this year of the watching the deer tracks <laughs> and they are definitely active on both sides of the street there. Um, and they, they walk along Charles River and you can also see the tracks going up to the road. So they are frequently, they're definitely inhabiting that area. So, um, and being that, I, I know they're all over Needham, but it is heavily wooded right there. So on both sides, there's the uh, town, town woods on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, I don't know if it's possible to, my, my, the two things that would be nice to see would be uh, one, a deer crossing sign. I'm not really sure what, how, how effective they are, if people pay attention to them or not, um, but it's better than nothing. And then the other would be if there's a way to close the speed limit or if it could be reduced in that area that's by the woods. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Sins. Um, so it's, I think from, from a speed limit perspective, it's, it's gonna be, it's probably not something that we, that, that we can do, because I think that it is the um, thickly settled limit around there of 30, and I don't know if it's posted or not. Uh, Tony, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I do know that there's a possibility for, or there is a process for a, um, uh, a specific like chapter 2c warning sign for a deer um you know deer crossing elk crossing there's a there, there's a specific type but i think that there's certain criteria and i don't know if you know what the process is and i would kind of yield that to um our town um experts on the committee that would be able to kind of weigh in on that whether that's possible there are these te those types of signs but i don't know what the process is for for issuing those so um tony or or ryan do you have um comment on the deer crossing signs uh I'll, mr chair i'll comment and then then let uh, engineering comment as well um we've we've all seen these signs they mm -hmm. kind of grab our attention um i would be in favor i've seen a lot of deer I, I commute that way multiple times per day and at night and i i think it's a reasonable to put up some kind of advisory um not not just for the deer of course for the operators as well coming through there it's dangerous <laughs> for the deer right sure so um i would be i'd be um in favor if the committee wanted to to put up some advisory signs just uh, uh catching the attention of commuters that aren't aware mm -hmm. i'd defer to engineering recognizing um tony Mr. Chair, um, I have no objection to putting up a deer crossing sign with a, a speed tab of 30 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I, I would recommend to the committee is whoever's house we're putting it in front of, they have to agree. And that's, and that's our standard. Yep, and uh, agreed. Um, so Ms. Simons, that, um, Unless, and I'll, first of all, is there anyone else on the committee that wants to comment? No, no. so um, so normally any sort of sign, whether it's a child, uh, the, you know, slow child crossing, et cetera, uh, or, or children playing, um, whenever we put a sign up, we wanna make sure that the, the house in front of where we put the sign or the property owner, um, where that, that, that they, they sign off on that because there is a sign in front of their property. Uh, your and and oh sorry signs yes so there's plenty of stretches there where it wouldn't even be near somebody's house there's no there are no houses on the one side of the street uh for, where well, exactly for Do, so that's the thing and i don't know whether anecdotally whether um because i think the motion would be that i would make would be for the town to to put it up in the most appropriate location or at least to identify the appropriate location because a, I don't know if if someone from conservation or someone somewhere needs to identify where we think the deer, the area of the deer are, um, rather than just having a, a four right. mile long swath, um, you know, of, right. of where it would be. So perhaps you know the motion is that we um, 
we, we, we are in favor of, you know, TMAC is in favor of installation of deer crossing signs, you know, with obviously input from uh, forestry or conservation or whoever that would be. I don't know what body that would be. And then we need to figure out if it's a property owner that's right there, we need to obviously make sure that it's there, um, that, that they consent to that around, um, you know, if it's, if it's immediately in front of their house. <clears throat> but it's, I don't know where the, the appropriate location is. And I think that I would let that, let the town decide, um, you know, where the appropriate um, location for that is. So would that be, oh, with the, the Simons, yes, you're on mute. So I do have a sense, <laughs> having almost hit one, I mean, I really mm -hmm. reached the brakes of where one of them crossed, which was um, to, I know exactly where it was. I still remember where it was. Um, and I think given that, and then if they look at where the other two deer were hit, that would be helpful. Oh, and, I, and I know that they would probably try to figure out. Um, so where was that? And what, what in front of where? So it was right. Um, they were, the deer was crossing from the Ridge Hill Reservation side on right. the, um, yeah. to the, on the north side. Um, so near Bell like, or Whitman or? Uh, past Whit Bell and Whitman, like further towards, just like past the entrance the, the um, driveway there? The driveway, you mean? Yeah, the, yeah, that the driveway, like to, between the drive, it was about approximately between the driveway and um, cent Central Avenue. So, so well, obviously on one side. Street comes in. Sorry? Where, go ahead, Bob. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, between Ridge Hill Driveway and where Pine Street kind of merges in there. Is it somewhere in that area? Yes, around there. Yeah, exactly. So um, we're really looking at the other side of the property because one side is town property, um, you know, area where I think there probably wouldn't necessarily be an objection from the town. It would really be in the in the in the easterly direction, um, you know, that we would need to have a sign on on the side that abuts someone's property. That and I think we can work that out, um, Bob. Is that something that we typically do? And okay. Um, so I know this is going to be an open-ended um, motion, but I want to uh, make a motion for uh, deer crossing signs in the area of Ridge Hill Road um, at final location to be determined by the town in consultation with conservation um, and the property owner on the easterly side. We can figure that out and, and, and find out that location. Okay. I second the motion. Motion seconded by Donna. Daphne, if you could uh, do a roll call. All right, Mr. Del Gazo. Aye. Mr. Hoyland. Aye. Mr. McCollin. Aye. Mr. Bauer. Aye. Ms. Mullen. Aye. The motion passes. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. At this point, um, we have three items to the agenda. This is going to be a fast meeting. But anyway, I make a motion to uh, adjourn at 8.43. No, I want to keep going. <laughs> you said that last time. <laughs> I second the motion. Thank you, Ms. Simons. <laughs> All right, we want to um... Do we have a motion to adjourn there? I don't have a second. Apparently, Donna said no. So I second. second. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Bauer seconds. All Thank right. you. Mr. Delgado. Thank you, Ms. Simons. Aye. Mr. Hoyland. Aye. Mr. McCollin. Aye. Mr. Bauer. Aye. Uh, Ms. Mullen. I guess so. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to vote nay. <laughs> she was just voting nay. <laughs> Well, we still have the majority, so thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, we'll see you uh, next month. Um, thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.